Triple T Squad, Sugar Keisha. I'm here with tonight's All T All J Love and Hip Hop. No, I was gonna say New York, <laughs> Atlanta, season seven, episode fifteen. For any of you all that watch Claws, <clears throat> I'm not doing a Claws review this week. I'll pick up this Sunday. I was busy yesterday, so let's get started on this review of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. So we start off with Estelita at her video shoot. Spice and Stevie J are there to support her. They dog just Britney performance in Texas to Stevie J and make fun of her. Because you know they don't like her. Shooter shows up and invites Stevie to his Stop the Violence rally. Spice realizes that he's Sierra's ex-husband and throws up in his face that she's messing with somebody else. And I'm like, see, Spice, this is why, once again, I don't like your little minion-looking ass. Because you always getting involved in stuff that ain't got nothing to do with you and you always being messy and spiteful for no reason. What has Sierra done to you? Nothing at all. You don't like Sierra now because Estelita don't like her? Okay, girl. And if I wasn't mistaken, she was giving Shooter like the Google eyes like she liked him, like she low-key wanted to smash. So, okay, girl. As the leader say, um, oh, you talking about Bitch K. That's what she calls BK. Um, see if you want to know what's that about. And they tell him that BK was disrespectful to women and that he got involved in their beef with Sierra. CV don't like this news. And I guess he called himself going to go and check BK for Estelita. Which I was very shocked by. But I was like, okay, he need camera time. Because he ain't been on like the last five episodes. Clock that T. So Tokyo performing on stage. Tobias is there with flowers for her. Um, young name Old Face, a.k.a. Keely, is there in the audience. She tells Tobias that she and Tokyo got off on the wrong foot and that she want to talk to her. So he bring her backstage. Tokyo say, don't bring that B. I don't F with her. Uh, so don't bring her to my dressing room and escort your company out of her. Keely say, you know what? I get it. We got off on the wrong foot. Great performance anyway. And she leaves. Uh, Tokyo, Tokyo goes off on him about bringing Old Face around her. She tells him not to try to work out things with her if he's going to be seeing Spice, 100%. She says it's over and she's done with him, but he walk out and you can see when he was walking down the steps that he was low-key laughing. I don't even know if their relationship is true or not. It just comes across inauthentic. It comes across more like they best friends pretending to go with each other for the sake of a storyline for a show. So, he, uh, what's the Kelsey... Uh, met her little brother Cannon one time and she's so in love with him even though she's only met him one time according to what she's lying and saying on this show so she asked Kurt to meet her at the park because she wants him to have a relationship with Cannon too she tells him that she met with Jasmine so she could see Cannon she tells him that he's moving too slow to see Cannon and he's going to regret not being in his life she says it's time for him to see him and then they turn around and there goes Jasmine and Cannon. So you're not going to tell me that when he pulled up, he didn't see Jasmine and Cannon back there on that playground? Okay. Um, Kirk said, you tripping. This is a lie. I'm like, if this is your son, how was this a lie? And how is she tripping? And why does your little child, your like 20-something-year-old daughter, got more common sense than you to tell you you need to step up and be a daddy? Girl, this storyline is so stupid. He go over to see the little boy and Cannon immediately recognizes him, immediately turns around and just starts smiling. He jumps down, runs over to him, jumps into his arms, but this is supposed to be the first time this little boy ever seen this man. Get out of here with this foolishness. Like I said last week, it wasn't his first time seeing Kelsey and this ain't his first prime time being around Kirk. If that is his daddy and this storyline is true, then like I said, he has been around him. He has been around them enough that he recognizes them upon sight. Bye for people. Jasmine happy is happy, you know, they finally, you know, dealing with each other on some family type shit. Kirk take a picture with his kids. Shooter and Sierra meet to finalize their divorce. She say, you know, they basically see a family because they got children together. He say he didn't handle things right with her and that he should have left when it was time for them to go their separate ways. Mm, you think about that now? Instead of going around her sleeping with everybody in Atlanta, why didn't you just leave the girl alone? I wish more of you men would think with your head instead of the head down there. It will cause less drama and less pain for everybody and less headache. So she bring up him having a two-year-old finally, and he says that he doesn't, but then he says there's a possibility and that he'll know in two weeks. And you wonder why we get a divorce. Bye, Shooter. They sign the papers and they leave. Rashida's at the new press location in Atlanta. They moved on to a bigger space because the store's doing so well. She invites Kirk over to talk. Rashida brings up the picture of him. 
that he took with the kids on social media. She feels like he should have told her about the picture immediately. I agree, you know, because if you're trying to work things out with me, but you sneaking and going to see your baby mama, even though you didn't know what it was, you should have told me what was happening. Um, instead of me just seeing this on social media, but you know, I don't believe anything about this storyline. He tells her he wants to bring Cannon around Rashida and the kids. She was like, you know what, you can bring around the kids, but I'm not ready to be around him. And that's respectable. Tokyo was asked to talk to a group of girls about their confidence. She asked Sierra to go with her to talk to the organizer. She invites Melissa to the event as well, too. Tokyo talk about her and Tobias and Tobias bringing Keely to her show. He didn't bring her. She was already there, sis, but okay. Tokyo says her feelings for him haven't gone away. Sierra wants her to give him another chance. I'm like, what you want to be a dummy like you, Sierra? Sierra tells her that she and Shooter are divorced, and Tokyo is shocked by this because she did not think they was going to go through with it. BK in the booth rapping. I didn't know that this fool was supposed to be a rapper. I thought he was supposed to be like a producer or something. I can't see BK rapping. BK can't even decide whether he want to have a perm or a texturizer. I don't know if he want to have some Hawaiian Silky or he want to have some Soul Glow. He don't know what that hurt is. Half of it's curly, half of it's straight. Like, he don't even know what his Bob is doing, let alone his career. Um, Box, I mean. So, Sean Garrett is producing the track. Stevie comes by because Sean invited him. He invited him to tell him that he's working with Erica, and I guess he wanted to fill him out to see if he was going to have any problems with that, but Stevie didn't really care because him and Erica aren't on the best of terms. Um, Erica and him, uh, you know, ain't getting along because over the Estelita stuff. Uh, he said he ain't feeling her because all the things she's been saying about him around town. Stevie asked to speak to BK alone one-on-one. -on -one. BK said, you know, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm not going to let two chicks try to jump my girl. You wouldn't have let that go down. Stevie said, you should have just broke it up. BK said, I did. Stevie said, this is a long way from Brooklyn. I'm like, Stevie, who you supposed to be? Who you supposed to Ain't nobody scared of you, Stevie. Girl, these girls on the show might be scared of you, but ain't none of these dudes scared of you, Stevie. Stevie say, you know, I'm not going to respect you calling my chick a B. And BK say, as a man, my fault for that is cool, whatever. Stevie leaves. Tokyo talked to the, you know, girls at the little, you know, uh, event that she was at sierra melissa and tobias are there to support her sierra invited tokyo i mean tobias on her own though without telling tokyo melissa said you know are you okay with this you be some with you beefing with spice over this guy you like this guy and she said i love him and i was like okay say it to the back of the room i go oh we get it girl you want to be a fool and love this look look bill looking because <laughs> he is so funny looking he looked like who he look like he looked like one of them Muppets. I don't know which one, but he is so funny looking. He like Gonzo. He looked like something that ain't just right. So they talking. He say that Spice uh, ain't nothing. And he was like, you love me, don't you? And she like, yeah, I do. And he convinced her to go on a date. Don't nobody care. So S. Leader's performing. And she looks so much better than she did last season. Remember when she performed at that little um, picnic or uh, parade or whatever and her tights didn't match her skin her outfit was raggedy she was on some bitty bitty bum bum like Carly was season one it was terrible but she looked better her outfit was better still didn't like her tights the song was actually a bop I will give it to her the song was a bop um Erica is there. Stevie says that Erica sent him a DM going off saying he was talking about her. Stevie figures that Sean went back and told her that he said that she couldn't sing. Melissa, Spice, Carly, BK, and Sean sitting down talking. And the topic of Sean working with Erica comes up. And Erica says, Sean is thirsty. He works with anyone that got a P-U-S-S-Y. Hopefully, it'll make his hair grow back. Let it go like you let that hair go. Child, when you talking about somebody that fell out of my bed hollering, that was one of the best reads Carly Red has ever said. He looked like he wanted to whoop her ass. He was so like, is this bitch straight up talking about my hair? My non-existent hair? And her life? Is it? Girl, he was so mad. So, Esalita and Stevie joined them. Erica, Mimi, and Keely, mind you all, behind them at another little you know uh couch or whatever so there's a bunch of ruckus and we see that stevie daughter savannah was trying to fight erica but the guards are holding savannah back erica said you ready to be my little bitch bitch <laughs> that's your bedtime baby i was hollering because you know i don't like savannah savannah been grown since i don't know how long she used to try to fight jocelyn she used to get on the internet going back and forth arguing with jocelyn being disrespectful not standing in the child's place she grown 
now. So if she want to jump in a grown woman's face, you can get these hands. Now, do I believe that Erica uh, Mena would beat up Savannah? Absolutely not. She would get her ass kicked by Savannah. Savannah looks like she's been fighting her whole life. Erica can't fight worth a damn. Now, can Erica read a bitch? Can Erica cut you down to the white meat with her mouth? Absolutely 100% and she proved that on this week's episode but can Erica come in to throw them hands hell to the gnaw so ask Lee to come over and Erica said you better check your stepdaughter <laughs> Mimi thinks that Erica is wrong for wanting to fight Savannah when she ain't want us, uh, nobody talking about her child and I was like shut up Mimi because those are two totally different things her child is what 10 or 11 years old you have no business talking about a child Savannah ain't a child Savannah is a legal age Savannah got a mouth Savannah want to be grown like Brielle like Kim Zosiac's daughter so she can get it however she want to at any time of the day you're not going to walk over to this grown woman and try to fight her and don't think that she's not going to just go sit there and say, oh, because she's younger than me, I'm just supposed to sit here and take it. Girl, get out of here, Mimi, with your dumb ass. So, Stevie and uh, Esalie to go sit down with Erica, Mimi, Spice, and Keely. Erica say, you shouldn't be asking questions about me. Stevie say, I just asked if you can see it or not. Erica say, you ain't asked me that when you tried to sign me to Danger Zone, did you? And I was like, well, that is a great point, Erica. Stevie say, um, she said, so why ask so I asked it now that's a bitch move so if I wanted to I could make you my bitch and I was like damn Erica like why you gotta be so harsh why you gotta be so mean Stevie didn't know what to do with that he ain't used to bitches talking to him like that like Jocelyn used to get him but Erica like stabbed him in the chest with that Stevie said my daughter was gonna drag you like he couldn't even say nothing else that's all he could say and Erica said, your daughter needs milk. <laughs> Stevie say, you effing, you effing everything in town. Erica said, I wouldn't eff you with your daddy dick. And I was like, Erica, flag on the plane. Stop it. You're supposed to be a lady now. God. That's Alita say, I saw the DM. You call him a bitch. And I'm like, Really, that's Lita, the same girl that was crying to Eric about how bad he do you, how he treats you, how he play you. But now that he giving you the little time of day, now you want to side with Stevie and say, F your friends. See, it's hoes like that I can't fuck with. Hoes like her I cannot fuck with. If I was Eric, I should have, she should have cussed that's the leader non-Spanglish ass out. So, Erica say, so what? You act like a bitch, I'll treat you like a bitch. Real simple. Just Brittany then walks in giving us Bootsy Collins team like tea. She had on every crystal rhinestone that she could find at Claire's. Her aesthetic is just, oh gosh, she can't dress for nothing. And she thought she was doing it, baby. So Erica and Keely immediately start going off as soon as they start seeing her. They tell her to get out of there. She look a mess. Call her a pumpkin, Ronald McDonald, all this type of stuff. Ask Lee to say, why the fuck you here, bitch? And I love how S. Lee to go from speaking half broken English to full Atlanta. I'm going to fuck you up slang. Her voice changes. The broken English is gone. Like, it's, it cracks me up. Stevie get up to Lee because he don't even want to have no parts to this. S. Lee to Erica, Keely, and Spice try to then fight just Brittany. Once again, what in the hell does Spice have to do with this? Why are you jumping up, sis? And then when I found out this girl got kids back at home and you want her acting like a whole fool, you know what, Spice? You show sure right. So, the guards escort Brittany out. Erica then picks up a suede blue Louboutin that she assumed was just Brittany and pours her whole drink into it. And then you hear Spice say, wait a minute, Erica, that's my shoe. <laughs> Everybody started laughing. And I was like, see, that's what your ass get because God don't like us because you shouldn't have got up and tried to fight the girl in the first place with your ugly self. And at the end of the episode, we see uh, Stevie J meeting up with Richie Dollars and then the episode goes off. Tonight's episode of Love and Hip Hop, I give a C- minus because it really didn't get lit until the end of the episode. Uh, let's talk down below. Let me know what y'all think about tonight's episode. Remember my new book, First Wise Club, Volume 1, Melanin Magic, is on sale right now. The Nook and Kindle version uh, links are down below if you would like to purchase. Also, tonight, up until tomorrow, I think tomorrow is the last day, you can go to Amazon.com and download Mina's Joint 2, The Perfect Illusion, for free. Whether you have Kindle Unlimited or not, 
you can download my book Mina's Joint 2 The Perfect Illusion for free until tomorrow so head over to Amazon.com right now and download the book for free my name is Keisha Irvin K-E-I-S-H-A E-R-V-I-N download the book and get your life if you've never read any of my work I love you guys so much have a safe and blessed week and I will see you all Wednesday for my Black Ink Crew review